Oh, oh that's really good. And the chairs are a very nice touch. Yeah, I think so. Now, I love everything about this bar saloon. However, I'm thinking the wallpaper color should be red. Uh, no. I'm thinking more of like a royal blue. <laughs> No, there we go. I really think a red would be a very good touch. <laughs> or just blue though. So. It's funny, I hear you, I see you. However, red fits the theme better. Blue. Mm, red. Uh, blue. No, no, let's blue, go back to red. Blue, blue, no, 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 red, blue, we'll keep blue, it at red. Blue, blue. Oh, uh, uh, uh oh, wait, uh oh, uh oh. This That's is not millions good. of dollars worth of tech. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are here about to enter the Epic Games Innovation Lab in Los Angeles, California. And inside this building is the volume, the same technology that they used to film The Mandalorian. And we're gonna get to shoot a scene with the director of photography of The Mandalorian. Unreal Engine 5 powers this whole thing, so let's check it out. Let's go play. Epic Games invited us for an exclusive tour of their Los Angeles studio where they run Unreal Engine 5 on a huge set of LED screens. They call it the volume. <laughs> This is the same technology that brings all of our favorite video games, TV shows, and movies to life. But what exactly is the volume? The way I try to explain the volume to people, especially the LED volume, is that you are in an immersive 3D virtual slash real environment. I think the trick is to not think of it as a virtual environment. Imagine that you are in that space and you have a static depiction of that and when you look through the camera, what the camera is seeing is a complete integration between the physical reality and the virtual reality. That looks real. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a cave right now. Combining physical and digital elements, especially on set, hasn't always been this easy. It took filmmaking technology decades to get to this very expensive interactive visual environment. And they invited us knuckleheads to play with it. Nothing to see here. Just playing with multi-million dollars. That's correct, we are knuckleheads. And we did get to film a scene in the volume. And while these big LED screens are the cutting edge of movie tech, it's actually based on an old idea. Baz, you're the cinematographer of The Mandalorian. Tell us all the history. Maybe a little history. That there's always been rear screen photography where, you know, if Cary Grant and whoever's next to him in the car is driving along and there's a, there's a film of Rome playing in the background and, you know, it, it's basically an image that makes them feel like they're in a car in Rome. But you can't move the camera, it's a fixed point image. So as soon as you start moving the camera, the background falls apart. Yeah, so instead of filming real life footage to put behind the actors, the volume uses a CGI environment created in Unreal Engine 5. If you've played video games like Fortnite and that Matrix Awakens demo. I only play Fortnite. I'm serious, I'm like level 100. You've right seen what this baby can do. So what we're starting to see now is the game engine is getting good enough to render things photo real but at that 24th of a second or 48th of a second. So all of a sudden, there's a lot of interest in this because of what it's doing is it's opening up the opportunity for your heads of department, right? Your, your DPs and your art directors and production design and your director and all of the different folks to actually collaborate on the image itself. Similar to filming on location, Unreal Engine can render miles of any digital environment onto these massive LED screens. And thanks to Unreal's tech, the camera directly communicates with the surroundings on the video walls in real time. All right, let's do it. Oh, beautiful camera. Oh my wow. goodness. That is, how are you, this is how I normally really Essentially, this is a very expensive motion captured camera. A lot of bells and whistles and it's, very light for testing. You see we have a rig rail, we have some pieces on top, and of course we have our lenses that we can play with just like you can at home with some basic photography stuff. The difference being that we are tying this directly into Unreal Engine, so we can capture live footage with uh, a digitally tracked environment. See all those infrared cameras? There's a ton of them around the stage because they're used to track the camera's exact location relative to the CGI background. You see how the background moves behind Ben and I as the camera moves? Yeah, that's the big magic trick that makes the volume so special and makes us look cooler than we actually are. Speak for yourself. No can do. Yeah, so these are uh, essentially what you see in your uh, generic motion capture volume, right? Infrared cameras have been around for a very, very long time. We've just kind of repurposed these for tracking whatever we need for motion capture data. That's essentially it. That's the magic behind the sauce here is because if you don't have this data flowing into Unreal or flowing to the wall, 
uh, we're stuck with just a, a background. There's no perspective change. So the more cameras you have shooting into a volume, the more coverage you get. The more coverage you get, the smaller distance you can track. So I wasn't kidding when you say it. you can go sub millimeter and if I just move like that, it'll get picked up in, in the machine and it will reflect on the wall. So uh, we have an abundance of cameras here just to kind of help us out with all of our research development, innovation and testing that we do here at the lab. Oh, oh, jeez. Cover your mouth. You <laughs> so I'm going to boom a little bit to the right and left and just look at how the scene shifts in perspective. Now, this allows me to go around corners. The, what you couldn't do before with LED technology as your backdrop for productions was really explore the environment. You were stuck with just uh, the 2D parallax shift that we've had since Snow White. Uh, now you can actually punch in, you can have the stage travel down a road for an infinite uh, car loop. There's a lot more to explore here. The volume is so much more than just Unreal Engine graphics cards and a ton of cameras. It's really just a tool, like Jeffrey. Oh! oh. oh. And that tool requires a small army of extremely talented artists to operate it, unlike Jeffrey. Hey. Before they let us play on it, the folks at Epic detailed how that small army collaborates to make insane worlds that wouldn't have been possible for actors to stand in a decade ago. I'll have one warm, flat sprite, please. Why are you laughing? The volume is using a video game engine, but it's not like you can just boot up any world and play around. Well, actually, you can. And now that the filmmakers have input in the building of the digital world, you have the recipe for a whole new level of collaboration on set. When you actually get into an environment, into a volume and you're shooting, I do all of the things that I would do as a DP, as a cinematographer, where I want to line up shots with the actors, I want to control the lighting, work out where I put the lights. I do the same thing, it's a real set. I do all those same things. But the great thing is that I am actually now involved in the creation of those environments, of that digital asset, because when we're building it in pre-production, I know that we're building a lighting environment. I know that we're building an environment that will have light that will illuminate the actor. What do you want to do? Like, where do you want to move the camera? Where do you want to move the stage? Do I want to pick the stage up and go from being on the ground up onto the top of the building? Wait a minute, hold on, there's a top of a building? Yeah, and it's just, it's just there. You can go out and you can scout. And to watch people's minds just blow, Sure, they can move through sets and locations, but the filmmakers also have an insane amount of lighting control on the volume. We think of the volume as a big video wall, and it is, but those video screens are just a densely packed collection of LED lights. We thought that at the beginning, and so we did that a lot at the beginning where, yes, you can put up in this, in this environment of LED panels, I can put up a big square of white or whatever color light I want to light me, and I can put up a massive huge flag or black pixels to create contrast, you know, no, no light on this side. I can even put like a strip of white pixels above out of frame at the back so I've got a little top light. What we discovered is that they're gross tools and you still need some fine tools. You still need to supplement that with traditional set lighting. And the goal for me is to, is to make a shot that feels like that person, me or whoever it is that's in that environment, you're actually in that real environment. The fact of the matter is to this point, it's been almost like voodoo what's going on in, in the CG world. And it's really hard for people to understand. There's this kind of black box of what's going on. And right now, it's this point where, no, the, the digital world is no different than the virtual world. You're like, wait a minute, I can just pick that thing up and move it over here? Yeah, pretty much. I can just move a light? Yeah, you can do that. And the volume's voodoo lighting magic doesn't shine brighter than in this dank, dimly lit digital cave. This little setup here, we also have props that we can use. Uh, so what this is, is this is an OptiTrack puck. Uh, this has a flat four star constellation with passive markers. So this is just, the camera's just picking up the infrared, it's not pulsating at a micro frequency and being identified. Now we've put this very professionally with zip ties and duct tape onto a flashlight and uh, we are able to strap a spotlight in Unreal that looks exactly like a flashlight fall off and literally just have that come to life <laughs> in the scene in real time. Oh man. I, I can see, wait, go back here. Oh, yeah. I wanna see around this rock. 
Let's see around this rock here. I'm, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I left my keys back there. <laughs> right now we're just scratching the surface of what's going on. Like all of this is new. People are just wrapping their heads around it, even to the point where there are a whole bunch of quote unquote rules that I, I've, I've done this enough to know that all of those rules are gonna be smashed. We're gonna be doing new things and someone who's super creative is gonna come in and, and think about this in a way that no one else has thought about it. So what I'm excited about is seeing that happen, number one. Number two, I'm also just simply excited about film and television industry taking advantage of a game engine for what a game engine does not just a rendering thing, not to just see images very quickly. No, what does a game engine actually do? It has physics. I can affect things that happen there. I can program things. I can even have it have its own uh, AI. So what's gonna happen when we start to introduce those things? So that to me is really super exciting. And I think we're gonna see all of this fall into place very quickly. I just hope that we see someone who's watching this thing actually, and they are grabbing onto the engine, and next year they're gonna come out with something that just blows all of our socks off, and that is gonna happen. We're about to go and play on the volume, uh, on the, we're gonna have a little shootout. Um, uh, what's some advice you have for us as, as we're about to step onto this amazing kind of technological stage? Well, as you step onto it, I mean, we have to remember that this thing is, you know, I mean, you guys play games, you do all your stuff, but this is a very expensive thing. So don't break anything, please. So I know we discussed buying a bar, so I did, surprise. I love the saloon aesthetic. However, I'm thinking maybe we need a little bit more barrel. Oh, a little bit of atmosphere, I like that. What about some tables? Oh. Ooh, yeah, the chairs are a nice touch too. Yeah. So I love everything about this bar. However, I'm thinking for the wallpaper color, we go red. Oh, I like it, but I hate it. So why don't we try royal blue? Royal blue, that's fun. Thank I you. love it, that's my favorite. Done. However, red is better. <laughs> Let's just say blue. It's funny, I do want to say blue, I really do, like genuinely, but red fits the aesthetic better. Blue. Red. Blue. Red. Blue, 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 blue. Red. Blue, Let's keep it at red. Blue, We're going to keep blue, it at red. And, uh, 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 well, you shouldn't have said red. Red always breaks it. Oh, uh, this no. is million dollars worth of tech. Okay, yes, this is, um, yeah. Okay, this is not good. You okay. did it. No, I didn't no, do you it. You said it, you said it. No, no, no. Hey, hey, it was him. No, I, um, okay, uh, this is fine. Okay, uh, let's settle it with the duel then. To the death? Sure. All right, I'm ready. Where'd you get that? I don't know. I always carry it on my knee. Okay. Let's do it. I always thought I would kill you. And I always thought we'd be outside for real. Yeah, me too. All right, so it's a duel. A duel. <whistles> wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. wah. <sighs> Ow! Oh. That hurt. Yeah. I'm dying. Mm, definitely dying. Okay, yeah. Mm. All right. Wrap it up. Mm. That, what was that? That's not even... It's plenty of time to take off your hat. You're dying. Okay. God. Ow! So yeah, obviously don't touch the... Okay. Mm. Okay. Thanks to Unreal Engine 5 and the Epic Games Innovation Lab and the volume for making all this possible. He's fine. That was awesome. <laughs> I did just get shot literally and figuratively. That was like a real actual Hollywood production. Now we didn't get to play Fortnite, but we did get to play God. Yeah. I love that you can just change anything in the volume on the fly. And I just love that they let us waste millions of dollars just goofing around. Yeah, it was very expensive in there and we <laughs> yeah. definitely broke it. But hey, movies, TV shows, games, all that's possible. Everything is good and I love it. And you should follow your dreams. That's what I'm doing. Let's do it.